Okay, we're at the start of our adventure here. Going to need a new mode of transportation, the old Schwinn. Uh, that thing's been from far west as Hawaii and far east and south as the Virgin Islands. So, uh, but anyways, we are on Sugarloaf, Sugarloaf Road. Uh, and we have to go down to the corner all the way down there because they don't allow parking because they think it'll keep people from taking the route that we're going to take. It's a walking and uh, bicycle only type path. But uh, we've got the bike, got my pole, backpack, some cooking stuff. So we're going to do a quick adventurous catch and cook. All right, we are on the road. It used to be all parking here, but then they blocked it off. So you have to park way the hell down there or way the hell over there. So it's one of the Florida Keys wildlife and environmental areas. State Road 939A, dead end. And they don't want you to park that way either, where all those cars are parked. And we just got to make our way around here. Do a little off-roading. It's a pretty popular spot. Especially on a windy day like this. And off we go. Some parts of the road are still pretty nice. Jumping bridge. How's <laughs> it going? That was the jumping bridge. It's a really deep channel that runs all the way up the to the north there where they were going to put old residentials in but never did and there's a big loop you can take but we're going to go all the way to the end where the uh, bridge is uh was destroyed nice little turn off area nice little hangout spot bunch of barracudas it's nice out here but got to keep on going this is the uh, deep water lagoon. Ugh. More like a quarry, I guess it would be. Nice hidden area back here. It'd be a good, nice place to snorkel, deep trench. I don't know what the quality of fish would be in here. I know there would be some from flooding and getting landlocked in there. Nice place to have a freshwater largemouth bath spot. Here's that road that goes around and then loops back. So we'll take that on the way back. We're still going to go to the uh, dead end bridge where the bridge has collapsed. This is the part if you look on the map it's all covered in trees and you just have an imaginary line going through here but this is uh you can get this gets washed over so probably what took out that bridge that's why all the plastic trash and stuff over here Yeah, a little bit. Adventuring. <laughs> Guess this is the end of the road. Swim across. Yeah, I think so. Looks kind of fishy. <laughs> no, 
now we're gonna do the loop. So on the way back, it's this road to the right. And it's actually gonna go make a horseshoe and then come right back towards the entrance way there. Here's the loop. So we can start heading back around there and then it loops back. Some beautiful flats over here though. Looking for a permit and uh, bonefish. Soon to be tarpon. Ah, so I think this is going to be my spot of choice. Ah, no more kudas. Nice clean spot. Maybe do some swimming. So we'll give this a shot. See what lives in here in the deep. Man, that's a little schoolman. Little... Yeah, caught a fish. Man, those snappers might eat him. these colorful fish. Ooh, this might be our dinner, lunch. Yep, that is our lunch. Look how pretty these eyes are. Well, this massive fish just broke my pole. So I'm going to eat them. That just sucked. All right. Well, my friend, you picked the wrong day to break my rod. Yeah, 10 inches anyways. All right. Catch and cook starts. And this looks like a good enough spot. At least it's not, it has a little beachy area so I can walk down to the water instead of the drop off. Use this as a little wind block and make some lunch. All right, first thing we gotta do is dispatch this guy. And just put the knife in his brain. And you saw that little shutter, that's pretty much it. Okay, now we gotta scale them up. Cause I'm gonna fry this one whole. Gonna do a quick little guts pull out. Just gotta sever his gills. Okay. Once those are severed, you can just put your thumb in there and pull. And all the guts come out. I'm just going to clean out the insides.
there we are ready to be fried now I'm going to cut some incisions in there so that it fries easier and more even okay perfect all right what we've got for lunch we're gonna deep fry the grunt in just Cajun spices salt some hot oil then I'm gonna have a side of some coleslaw white rice some avocado got kind of guacamole already and then some uh, black beans and we're gonna just gonna do a one frying pan method so let's get this thing going got that here fired up throw a pan on got some basic canola oil Get that heated up. Spice this fish down. It's right at 10 inches, so it's going to fit the pan just perfectly. Cajun spices. Might have to adjust my windbreak. salt here all right just my windbreak all right oils looks hot enough so let's drop this guy in the frying pan Oh yeah, definitely hot enough. Probably should have cut his head off. So we'll just have to do this in segments. Although I'm not going to cook the, eat the head, still got to cook the cheeks. Then we got to get the tail going, of course. Let's flip this guy. Ooh, look how nice that looks. Perfect. Man, that Cajun spices smells so good. Perfect. I think we're all good to go. This is going to come off. I'm going to drain the oil. that drain and heat. I'm going to put the coleslaw and the rice in the pan and the avocado. But first I need to uh, heat these beans up. So these go back over. And then the can of beans goes on there. And we'll give that a little bit time to heat. Rice and coleslaw or sliced cabbage so that can go on one side rice can go on this side a little mixture of both Soak up some of them juices. See if I can salvage this avocado.
now we just need the beans. And for lunch today, we've got the fried grunt, some rice and beans, avocado, and some coleslaw. Time to eat. And we've got our lunch with a view. Got these whole chunks of the uh, grunt comes right off. Mm. Cause you put those slices in there, and it just comes off as one big chunk of meat. A little bit of avocado. Turned out to be a nice day. That was a pretty long bike ride. Highly suggest you bring a lot of water. Just flakes off. Eat it with your fingers. All the way to the brain. Itty bitty cheek meat. Suck it off the bone. Get all that meat off the spine. Mm. That just leaves all this meat. meat, a little bit of beans, a little bit of rice, a little bit of avocado. I think I could use another one of those fish. Avocado makes a nice touch though.
Matt's lunch. So I hope you enjoyed that. Now we just got to make the short ride back to the car. And we're coming up to the jumping bridge. Got a, quite a few candidates it looks like. That's where everybody else parks there. A little bit closer. But I just park right there at the end of the no parking sign. And we have survived our little adventure. The Schwinn held up, no problems. Got some good deer lunch out of it. And we can get out of here now. Today's adventure took place in Sugarloaf Key. And you basically take Sugarloaf Boulevard. It's across the uh, street from the Sugarloaf Lodge on US 1 or the turn off for the airport. Just follow the road down until it comes to a basically a dead end here. And then at that point you can go right which is the old state 4A road and Sugarloaf is the corner. Um, the entranceway is right here on the corner and then going east. You could park way up north where the sign says no parking to the right, but you can park farther north as well as uh, to the west you can park as well just beyond the no parking signs. And you can pass through that gate and just head on through. Right here is what's called the jumping bridge. Uh, it's a deep channel that they cut so a lot of people just jump off that bridge. A lot of little hard limestone style uh, beaches where you can kind of find your own little spot up and below this uh, channel there. Then what I did is this is the entrance to take that big loop all the way around and then come back to this one so it's just one big loop. Here is where I ended up uh, catching that fish and then doing the catch and cook in this little quarry here. There's also if you take the quarry there's a little path that comes through and goes to a little beach here if you wanted to do that as well. You'll just see it's just a little hidden path there. But otherwise uh, the main part of it was coming on the old State Road 4A. It's uh, overgrown with uh, mangrove trees but you can see it's still a decent bike path, nothing crazy. And then ends up here at the old dilapidated bridge that they uh, they basically burned or knocked it down so that the boats can get through here easily. Uh, if you were to swim across, you can continue continue on and head up, ride up Upper Sugarloaf to uh, back to US-1. So that's an alternative route you can take there. And then as you can see, I took this loop this way, it kind of branches around hooks around and then takes you right back there so a uh, bunch of different stuff you can do uh, if you had a full day you could make a walking adventure um, it does get hot it's humid uh, definitely take a lot of water for a bike ride it's a nice afternoon run that you can do both things definitely bring your swimsuit uh, snorkel would work out tons of places to get in the water and uh, swim around uh, not the greatest fishing spots around uh, these are all dead areas uh, so there's not a lot of water movement so you tend to not have a lot of uh, fish hanging out but 
interesting place to go, especially when the wind is blowing and you can't get off the uh, off fishing. Uh, gives you an opportunity to do something in the keys. So that's uh, I add this to my uh, adventure playlist, which, like I said, is just this bunch of stuff that you can do when the wind's not that great for fishing. Uh, give you opportunity to head out and check out some of the keys hidden spots. So I hope you like that. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video.